Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to continue to talk about in forever. Now in my previous previous videos, and I'll put the links to those videos in the description, um, I gave a brief introduction to in forever and uh, talked about how you would go about configuring it. Now in this video, I want to talk about uh, a key aspect of in forever, which is forecasting. How you could create rolling forecast, how you can actualize forecast, close periods, and one of the beauties of in forever i would say is having measures as rows now in power bi in, in in the matrix visual you cannot have measures as rows out of the box you there are workarounds but not right out of the box now in, in in forever you can do this right this is this is simply amazing i i think it's one of the basic features but Considering it's not available in any other visual in Power BI, it is it is it is one of the key asks in my in my experience. So we're going to talk about that and uh, much more. Let's get started. Now, as you can see in the visual, this is an in forever visual where I have sales and forecast. These are my measures and they appear as rows. And sales is my actuals, and you see that I have actuals through June, so that's populated. And then I have forecast going forward from July um, onwards. Um, now, as I get data for July, my forecast is actualized. And basically that means is my forecast is replaced by actuals. Uh, and I can even create a rolling uh, forecast. And uh, so I can add a month to my current forecast and so forth. So let me show how you would go about doing it. Let me start from scratch here, okay. So I am on a new page here. Let me pick uh, year uh, and month here, and then I need business unit name. And let me pick the in forever visual, resize this whole thing. I want year in columns, month in columns, and I'm gonna filter it to 2024 because uh, I'm gonna forecast for 2024. So that's that's where we are starting with. I can expand that out to see all the months. Let me um, also filter out months just through June because that's what I have my uh, actuals or sales data for, right? So that's my data. Uh, and if I click on this uh, focus mode, I can get to the in forever um, configuration. All right, so now in the ribbon, we have multiple options. So let's start with, uh, now I want to create forecast. So where do I start with? So if I go to insert, I have the option to insert forecast. Now when I insert forecast, the first thing is I need to log in uh, because this is a licensed tool, or I, sh I should say a licensed visual. And then it's asking uh, for the f uh, name of the measure and it's, it's a forecast, so I'll leave it at that. And what am I, what is my forecast period? So here I have already actuals through June. I'm forecasting from July to December. And what is the value that needs to be filled for the periods which already have data, that is January to um, June. I want to fill, the, fill those values with the actuals, which is my sales measure. So when I, once I click next, this is where it asks me for the target or the actual, uh, for my forecast period, what to do with that? Uh, with those cells, should I should it leave it as blank, or should it fill with fill it with sales values? Now, if I pick sales values, <clears throat> I can either pick um, a, a, a period. So I uh, I can say okay, fill it with values from January through June, um, and then maybe you can average the data for that uh, period, January through June. In this case, it's six months, so it fill, fills up. Uh, the next six months. Or I can just pick a single period and say, okay, always fill it with the latest periods value, June value or so forth. So let, let me pick average of period and let's say Jan through June, click on save. And now you see that I have two columns. Previously I had just one sales, now I have forecast column. And for January through June, the forecast value is the same as the actuals. And then going forward, it is, uh, put the average for the first six months is uh, been filled, uh, filled in as forecast for July through December. And these fields are, um, these are the default values and obviously the end users can, once this is published, end users come in, they update the forecast. So th this is just to, uh, to give, give them some default values to start with. Now, um, now ideally what uh, we uh, most enterprise 
is what would they want is see just one column of data. So they want, uh, if I use this option here for on the home screen, hide closed periods, what it does is for the closed periods, you don't see the forecast column, you see just the actuals. And uh, in my case, July through December, I see the forecast column. So this way we have just one, uh, one series of columns that we can see actuals for closed periods and uh, forecast values for uh, the future forecast periods. Okay, so let's do this. Let, let me um, add a, uh, change the forecast for July. Let's say I, it's 45 million. And notice it spreads it for the, all the business units. Now, uh, let me do this. Let's, let's go to forecast. And let's say I've actuals for July now. So I go to filters here and uh, you know, in my case, I have some data for July, some actuals for July. Let's say we've got all the data has come through. I have sales data for July, and I want to close the period. My uh, July uh, forecast is done. Actuals are there, so I'm closing the period. Now, when I close the period, uh, this I'm closing for July, and then what I can do is I can add a rolling forecast. So let's say every time a period is closed, I can create a rolling forecast. So I can do it, um, you increase it by one month, a quarter, a year. So it creates a rolling forecast. So let's say uh, some companies do always six month uh, rolling forecast or a year rolling forecast. So you can always automate this, right? You, it, it, you don't have to manually come and close every, uh, every period. So here you see, this is the closed. Now July is closed, August through January is the new forecast period. Right, so it automatically created uh, the dates, and then if I ex expand this out, we see it's um, created a <coughs> uh, column for January. Now, like I said, every time we don't have to come and close these uh, forecasts. If I go to uh, managing these measures, if I scroll down here in this auto close setting section, I can actually set the period to close on a particular day of the month or the uh, or the let's say the third work day of every month or so forth right um, and there are a few other options here as well now what we did was uh, this is the default value for the forecast strategy um, show entered forecast value for closed periods right and default uh, to actuals now we can also do a rolling forecast, always show values from actuals for closed periods. Um, so if I do that, you see now I see only actuals for closed periods, right? So there are dif different options available, configuration options as, um, as needed. Uh, now, one more uh, cool thing here is we can also reforecast. Let me put this back. And once we go to reforecast, and now since I added new period, I can reforecast, either leave it as blank or I can do the same thing as earlier. I can now average it for the first seven months of the year um, and reforecast it. So, so that's pretty cool. So you can reforecast it um, every month. You can have a uh, automatically closed periods. And, and here's the best part, right? So we have two columns, sales and uh, forecast. Uh, so let let me go back and uh, you know I'll say show closed periods. Now you have two columns. I can go back and say don't hide closed periods. So this we already talked about. Now here's the here's the cool part. We want these measures as rows. So it's as simple as going to layout measures in rows. There you go. Now we have sales and forecast as individual <clears throat> uh, rows, not columns anymore. Imagine if we were building this template using Power Apps and you know, for one use case, you want the measures as rows, the other as columns. It, it would be pretty much recording the whole thing. Here, everything is so easy to do. It's, a, it's just a few clicks away. Um, and of course, all the, uh, all the other features I just talked about in terms of rolling forecast and closing periods. So it, it, it's, it's, turning out to be one of my favorite Power BI visuals. The more I work on planning and forecasting, uh, th this, is, uh, this is phenomenal. Um, so hope this um, video helps. And uh, as always, do subscribe and uh, like these videos. And if you need to reach out, www.obvience.com.